good morning students welcome to our history class today we are going to study chapter number 2 which is rise and spread of islam and its impact prophet muhammad was the last prophet of islam he was born in around 570 AD in Mecca a city of Arabia during his childhood prophet muhammad lost his parents he was brought up by his uncle and lived a very hard life he grew up to be a thoughtful young man who noticed the absurdity of the people living around him he found that they were ignorant and cruel and they worshiped many gods and goddesses within a short period of time he won the love and affection of many people living in mecca and received the title of alamin the faithful one at the age of 40 he realized many things that there is only one god he also realized that god had chosen him as a prophet or interpreter of the will of god later on several religious truths were revealed to him in his many visions islam is the religion followed by the muslims it has followers all over the world the name islam was chosen by prophet muhammad the founder of this religion he gave this name on the basis of an arabic word which means submission in religious terms islam means submission to god in mecca there is a cube like structure called kaaba which housed idols from all the tribes of arabia the kaaba was the center of the arabian religious life this place has a lot of religious significance it is regarded as the holiest place by the muslims in around 622 ad prophet muhammad he decided to migrate to madina this move of muhammad from mecca to madina was known as hijrat it led to the beginning of muslim calendar known as hijri islamic teachings and principles have been precisely laid down in the holy book called quran prophet muhammad preached that there is only one god allah he told people that idol worship is a sin and advised them to surrender to god live an honest life and give alms to poor he believed in the immortality of soul and preached that life of eternal happiness awaits all faithful and righteous people while faithless and evil people will be tormented in hell let's have a look at the five pillars of islam quran prescribes five duties for every muslim first duty is faith in one god or allah all muslims must recite the creed which states their belief in one god allah and prophet muhammad as their apostle of god the declaration of faith is known as shahada next second duty of every muslim is salat or prayer every muslim must pray five times in a day before sunrise at noon in the late afternoon at sunset and after sunset while praying the person must face the direction of kaaba third is zakat or purification every muslim must give 
alms to the poor. Fourth is psalm of fast fasting. Every Muslim should fast from dawn to dusk in the month of Ramzan, the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. And fifth duty, and uh, fifth and the last duty of every Muslim is Hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca. All Muslims should visit Mecca or their holiest shrine once in their lifetime if they are strong financially and physically and can sustain their family while they are away from their house. This pilgrimage to Mecca or Hajj is undertaken by the Muslims every year. Let's discuss about the spread of Islam. Prophet Muhammad had become the political and religious leader of the whole of Arabia before his death. His successors were known as Caliphs or Khalifas. They became the religious and political head of the Muslim community. The first four Caliphs were Abu Bakr, Umar Uthman and Ali. All of them, they were the companions of Prophet Muhammad. So, Abu Bakr and Umar, they spread Islam beyond Arabia to Syria, Persia, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, Turkey, Spain and Northern Africa. Slowly, afterwards, the Muslim community split into two sects, Shia and Sunni. The Shias regard Ali as the prophet's true successor. They believed that a caliph should be related to Prophet Muhammad either by blood or through marriages or through marriage into his family. On the other side, Shunis believe that a caliph should be chosen by the whole community. Slowly, at the end of 7th century, the Muslim empire spread to a vast area covering many countries of Western Asia, North Africa and Spain. And many of the dynasties, new dynasties were created named as Umayyad dynasty and Abbasid dynasties. Muslim culture and civilization was spreading into many regions of West Asia, Egypt and Spain due to the expansion of Muslim empire in these places. Muslim scholars developed various centers of higher education like some of the universities in Basra, Baghdad, Alexandria, Cairo, Cordova, the House of Wisdom in Baghdad, it's a big and famous library and center for translation. And Muslims during Abbasid's rule who were specially interested in education and learning, they opened this House of Wisdom in Baghdad. In 4th, 13th and 14th century, many new uh, universities were established in different countries of Europe and one of them was Oxford University. Progress was made in different fields of science, mathematics, literature and Islamic art. The Muslim rulers encouraged education and learning and invited scholars from different countries. Indians as well as Arabs gained a lot from each other with the exchange of ideas and learning. Thank you class.